Hi everyone. So, due to popular demand, we are going to do a full tutorial today on this gorgeous bag. This is the Miss Parker by American Stitchers and it is an awesome pattern. It goes together very well. It is, um, I don't want to say it's advanced because you can do this. It, you can definitely do it. Um, but there's just some different things in it, right? It's going to test your skills maybe a little bit, and that's a good thing. We always want to try to improve and do better. But isn't it just gorgeous? So let's go over the bag. Um, there is an optional crossbody that I did not put on there. So if you want that, you will be able to add that. You'll put a couple of crossbody connectors here and do a crossbody strap. I did a 30-inch uh, drop on this, and let me just show you how it sits. Okay. I did some um, hidden strap connectors, so you see here that there's, and I'll show you how to do this in the, in the video, there's no raw ends anywhere. The bag has a, well let's start on the outside, the bag has a slip pocket, great for a cell phone. It has a zipper closure top. Inside. We have a slip pocket here with a zipper pocket, and I added this extra slip pocket. And then over here on this side, we have a, let's see if you can see this, it's so hard to see the inside bag, double slip pocket. And then I added a key fob, because I add, like to add key fobs to all my bags. It, um, the best part of the bag, this is my favorite part, is the zipper pocket on the outside okay so can you see it no you can't you know why because it's hidden look at that Woo. and it goes all the way to this side Woo. isn't that awesome it's so awesome I love it I mean you can't even tell it's there Right? You cannot even tell it's there. Talk about a concealed pocket. That is just the bomb. So, and it is a um, concealed carry, but if you don't want it to be a concealed carry, just don't put the Velcro in there and it's just a concealed pocket. I mean, this bag is for everyone, everyone. So, um, I'm, it's gonna be for sale on my website. I, it's gonna take me a couple days to get it up. But if you're interested in buying it, go to simplycosic.net and it will be there. I will link it below. Um, I used some cotton canvas and I think it was from Cut Cut Sew. I will link that below. I'm using some Ultra Leva from Bodio and you're gonna see some struggles I had with it. Um, ultra Leather in double-sided tape, Ultra Leather in glue, Ultra Leather in super glue, do not mix. They just, nothing sticks to ultra leather. So if you're going to do this bag, do not use ultra leather for your accents. Just use a regular um, vinyl or uh, faux leather would be fine. Real leather, of course, would be fine. Cork would be great. Just not the ultra leather. You know, the ultra leather is like super soft. It's like buttery soft and it just didn't stick. So you get to see my struggles. Um, and then the inside is waterproof canvas. So I go over all the pieces, all the linings and interfacings, and that is about it. So I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, and let's get going. All right, let's go over our pattern pieces and our prep work. So you're gonna need zippers, as she says in the pattern. And I went ahead and cut all my zippers. I'm using zipper by the yard except for my top zipper. And that's only because I didn't have any black on black zipper by the yard left. So I have luckily have one ready-made zipper, number five, that I'm going to use for that. So I'm, as I mentioned, I'm not doing a crossbody strap. So I have all my zipper pulls. You're going to need um, rectangle rings and purse feet if you'd like to do purse feet. So those are all of the hardware needs. Now I've decided that I'm going to do a no raw end strap. So I ended up cutting 
and I'm doing one inch. The pattern calls for one and a quarter, but I don't have one and a quarter inch hardware, so I'm just doing one inch. So I ended up cutting two inch, and my straps are gonna be roughly 30 inches. I cut one a little bit shorter than the other. So these two are gonna go together, and they're one's about mm, two inches shorter. And then, so this is two inches by 30 on the long one, 28 on the short one, and I have two of those. And we're gonna do that no raw end showing strap option. Do a line down the middle. We'll go ahead and do those in just a minute. It'll be the first thing we do since we have a nice full bobbin. Um, you're going to need, I'm gonna flip these over and do these in order. You're gonna need two main pieces. Now I'm using this um, cotton canvas and I'm sorry, I don't remember where I got it from. I think I got it from, there's a place on Etsy called Cut Cut Sew, and she has a lot of canvas fabrics for what I think is very reasonable prices. I'll link her down below in the prescription. Um, uh, anyway, you know what I mean. I'll link her down below. And I think this is where I got that. But you want to go ahead and cut two main pieces and then on the back of one and this is all in the pattern pieces you want to go ahead and mark your zipper placement and then you're also going to cut a piece of foam she has a fabric or a pattern piece for the foam you want to go ahead and cut that out and you're going to cut out your rectangles and then this is fusible foam now i'm using the bozal single-sided fusible foam and it's a little bit thinner than the foam you get like at Joann's or someplace like that. I am keeping it out of my seam allowances because that's how the pattern is written. Um, that way it'll help you on a domestic machine if you're using a domestic. I could very well use it to the ends on this machine. It'll handle it. But um, in an effort to follow the pattern and um, cut the pattern pieces accordingly, this is what you're going to end up with. And I did just mark my center here. Okay, now on your other piece, you are not going to cut the zippers placements. It's just going to be a regular solid piece. Okay, so those are our two main pieces. Then we have, this is our, um, sorry. Okay, this, I wanted to show you how I did this. So this is the pattern piece for the concealed carry pocket front and she has a place that you can like where you, you need to mark where you put your velcro so what I did on this piece is you have to cut it on the fold unless you just want to extend the pattern piece cut two and tape them together but instead of cutting this piece out totally I just cut the ends here and then I once I cut my pattern piece I just folded this back placed it on my actual canvas and then just traced around so that way I know exactly where to put the Velcro. Okay, so you have your concealed carry pocket front. You have your concealed carry pocket back and she also has foam for that. Now, as you can see, this foam does not go all the way to the edges and Again, pattern pieces for all of that. She does have a um, Velcro placement for the back as well, which I need to go ahead and mark on here before I sew. And I did this the same way. I'm just gonna fold this back and mark it. All right. Then we have our lining pieces. Now on the lining piece, on one of the pieces, she has a cutout here for your zipper, for your interior zipper. Now, y'all know I love a zipper overlay, and that's how I am gonna do this zipper. But if not, you can go ahead and mark your zipper placement on here. You're gonna cut a piece of facing, and you're just going to clip it, pin it to this edge, sew around, and then flip it to the back, and then you can do your zipper that way. Once you do that, we're at the same spot as far as actually installing our zipper pocket. Okay, so you have two linings. Then you have a, if you choose to do this, which I like this, this is the front pocket, the front slip pocket. You have your main fabric, you have a piece of lining, 
Um, and then, of course, your pattern piece, you also have an overlay for this. So on the overlay, I went ahead and edge coated all of my edges before we started. And that's going to go right on the top. Now, I'm using a waterproof canvas for the lining. I'm using, again, like I said, a cotton canvas for the front. So I went ahead and put woven views on all of my main pieces. I'm not using any kind of woven views or anything on the lining because it is waterproof canvas. And then I'm using a faux leather. It's actually a faux ultra leather from Bodio. So again, I'm not going to be on these overlays. There's no seam allowance. You just want to edge coat it. We then have our contrast for our main panels. So I cut two of those and edge coated those as well before we started. You have your base piece and I have some Decoville Heavy on here. You're going to have two zipper facings for the concealed carry pocket. Now this is of my main fabric and there's no woven fuse on this because this is just the zipper facing that we're going to turn to the wrong side and use that way. Okay. Then you have your top zipper facings or your top zipper plackets and I just cut four all of my main fabric on that. You have your four pieces for the front handle connectors. This is the piece that's going to actually cover your concealed carry pockets on the front and on the back it's going to hold your, uh, or I guess it would be the back, but anyway, and then on the other side it's going to hold your slip pocket in. So we have four of these in my contrast and then I mark down the center. And again, she calls for one and a quarter inch hardware. I'm using one, so I cut these just a little bit narrower. And that's gonna be one of the first things we do as well, I'll stick that here. Then you um, have a slip pocket. Now in the slip pocket, she, it's almost a square. It's not quite a square. So just make sure you mark your edges. It's 11 by 12. So I actually put a number 12 over here, just wrote it in seam allowance, put another a number 11 up here. So when I go to fold it, I'll know which way to fold it. I have two zipper pocket pieces, again with woven views. And then I always like to put an extra little slip pocket underneath my zipper pocket. And I just cut that out of my main fabric as well. I keep it out of the, whenever I do this, I keep the woven fuse out of the seam allowance on the side. So for instance, on this pocket, I'm gonna be folding it this way and I'm gonna be stitching up here and I keep the woven fuse out because when I go to turn, I get a cleaner edge if I don't have that extra bulk from the woven fuse. And then you have your uh, zipper end piece, which I'm going to use hardware, but if you would like to use a zipper end piece, then you can go ahead and cut one for that. Okay, we're going to start out doing the handles because I have a full bobbin. I know I'm not going to run out and I'll be good to go. So this is what we're going to end up with. We're going to end up with handles that have no raw edges. And um, <clears throat> it's really a, a great way to finish. I'm probably going to end up putting a rivet here just to kind of dress it up a little bit. <clears throat> but I'm going to show you how to do that. So you've got two pieces to your handle. Um, in my case, I have a 2 by 30 inch piece and a 2 by 28 inch piece. And that's because I'm using one inch hardware. So I put double sided tape down the inside and I did not put it all the way to the edge on either piece. So I'm going to sew these right sides together, just one side here. Um, at a half inch seam allowance and I'm going to open up the seam and top stitch. Okay from here you want to go ahead and put both of your rectangle rings on. So you're just going to slide those on, doesn't matter where, 
stand up. You want to make sure your handle's not twisted. And you're going to do the same thing. You're going to sew this side together at a half inch seam allowance, open up the seam, and then top stitch. Okay, from here, you want to go ahead and just clip your corners here at an angle, and it help, will help reduce the bulk. So when you go to turn this, it's gonna make it a little less bulky, bulky there in those seams. Okay. So now what you're gonna do from here, and I'm gonna do this off camera because you know how to do this, I'm sure you've made bags, you just take off the double-sided tape, you fold the seam in until you have one continuous strip. So I'm gonna do that, and then I'll show you how we're gonna place our rectangle rings when we get back. Okay, I have all of my ends stuck to the middle, and if you were using anything besides ultra leather, you would run some double-sided tape down the middle of this, and then you would stick these two together. However, <clears throat> ultra leather does not stick, or double-sided tape does not stick to the right side of ultra leather. I also learned today, as a matter of fact, that Fabri-Tac does not stick to the right side of ultra leather. So, just know, if you use ultra leather, you're gonna have a hard time with double-sided tape and Fabri-Tac on the right side of the fabric. So I'm just gonna have to clip it. But what I'm gonna do is take my rectangle rings and just spread them. One's gonna go on one side, one's gonna go on the other side. You're gonna have a half of an inch where your ring is going to be from your seam. See, there's my seam right there. And the reason why we cut one shorter is because we don't want this seam to be right on the ring. You know, that's not the most secure point at this, you know, the stitching could theoretically come out. So it's always better to, if you're gonna do this method, to cut one two inches shorter, so that way you have a half inch on either side. Like this, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clip this. I'm gonna sew down both sides with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And then both of my handles will be done and we're gonna move on to our stripes. And that's where our top stitching is gonna get a little bit different. Okay, I have my straps done and you'll see I actually did four lines of stitching. Now, if you're doing the one and a quarter inch strap like the pattern says, then you're going to do, you're gonna stitch an eighth of an inch and you're gonna stitch a half inch. Let me make sure that's right. That is correct. If you are doing a one inch hardware like I'm doing, I stitched three eighths of an inch and then one eighth of an inch. Now the reason why you want to do four rows of stitching on your handles, however you do your handles, I mean this is just one method, you certainly don't have to do it this way, as far as connecting the rings. You could simply do a four inch strap, turn it to the middle, turn it again and stitch down and then just put the end of the strap in the connector and hold it with a rivet or stitching. That is not a problem. Even if you do that, you still want to do the four rows of stitching and you'll see why in just a minute. Okay, so I'm going to set these aside. And now we have our stripes. Now, if you again are using one and a half inch hardware, you're going to sew a half inch down each side of each stripe. Because I'm using one inch hardware, I'm going to sew three eighths of an inch down each side of each of the four stripes. So we'll do that and then I'll come back. Okay, so we have our four stripes done. 
sewn at either 3 8 or 1 half, depending on how large your hardware is. So we're going to put two of these aside and we're going to measure four and a half inches down on two of them. And I'm going to use some chalk and I'm just going to put a line. Okay, so on these two, we're going to sew an eighth of an inch down on from the top to this line, stop, pull your threads through, tie them off, and then from the top to the line on the other side. So we're working on the same side, an eighth of an inch on each side. And we're gonna do that for both of these. Okay, so this is what we have. We have it stitched an eighth of an inch, three eighths of an inch. We have long tails here. I'm gonna go ahead and pull my tails through. And I'm gonna tie them off. Then I'm gonna do exactly the same thing for the other one. So these two are done. So we're gonna move on to the next two. Okay, on these two, we're gonna do the same thing in a way. We're gonna measure four and a half inches down. Draw a line on both. Okay, now. We're going to sew an eighth of an inch down on opposite ends. And what I mean by that is you're going to sew an eighth of an inch, of an inch down on this side and you're gonna stop. And then on this piece, you're gonna sew an eighth of an inch down on this side and you're gonna stop, okay? So it's only one side of each stripe and make sure you do opposite sides. Take that chalk off and now on this side since I stitched an eighth of an inch on this side here over here on this side I'm going to stitch the entire way an eighth of an inch so now we have all of our stripes done so I'm gonna go ahead and tie this last one off, singe my knots, and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, the next thing is your exterior pocket. We're gonna put that together. So grab your pieces, which is your main panel piece, your lining piece, and then your overlay. You wanna put a couple pieces of double-sided tape on the back of your overlay, and then we're gonna line that up with the top of the right side of your pocket. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're gonna baste the side along the top, the other side, and then we're gonna to top stitch this curve right here. Now we're going to lay our lining piece right side down on top of this. And we are going to stitch this at a half inch seam allowance.
Okay. You want to go ahead and since this is a curve, you want to cut it either with some pinking shears or you want to make little X's all the way, or indentions um, all the way down. And I'm just going to cut these with my pinking shears, I think. going to top stitch this at a 1 8 inch seam allowance. And the main thing you want to do is make sure that you're really rolling this back. I'd rather have a little bit of the front side show on the back than have the back side show on the front. So just make sure you pull that down real good. Beautiful. So now I want to find the center of my pocket because we're going to put this on our front panel. So it looks like I need to trim just a little bit of the pocket off here. That kind of stuff happens. Don't worry if it happens to you too. It's all part of it. Um, Just when you're finding centers and all, it's easier if everything's good and straight and lined up. Okay, so I'm gonna find the center. And you wanna grab your front panel. Now that's gonna be the one without the two zipper holes. Okay. So it's this one here, the foam without the two zipper holes. You want to find the center of it. Go find the center on the top too. It never hurts to find your centers. And then we're going to center this pocket. We're going to rather match up the centers right like that, okay? Now, we're gonna take our two stripes that have the eighth of an inch seam allowance, or eighth of an inch stitch down the two top ends. And they are going to be centered on here to hold our pocket down. Now, since, now I would recommend using some double-sided tape here, but since double-sided tape does not stick to ultra leather and neither does Fabri-Tac, I need to think about how I'm gonna hold these in place. What I'm doing is lining up the edge of the pocket here. So this right here is the very end of the pocket. That is gonna go in between these two stitches. Now I'll tell you what I'm gonna do, is I'm going to, before I even put these on, just to kind of help hold everything in place, I'm gonna base my pocket on. Okay. I got a little ahead of myself. I had to, if you put, if you want a bag tag, a great place to put it is right here on this pocket. So make sure you do that before you baste your pocket on. Otherwise you're gonna do like I did and 
have to take it off and put it back on. Anyway, um, okay, so you wanna, and let me also back up with these stripes. You wanna measure two and one fourth inches down from the top where you did your four lines of stitching and you're going to put a chalk line. Then what you're going to do, now, let me say this. This is one of the downfalls to doing a handle like this is once you do it, you have to attach your handle now and your handle is gonna forever be there as you continue to make your bag. So just keep that in mind before you do a handle like this. A lot of times it's easier to do the other type of handle because then when you're all done, you can attach your handle afterwards instead of trying to, or having to deal with it as you're sewing. So once I mark my chalk line on each, I'm going to put it through my ring and I'm going to fold it on that line, that two and a quarter inch line. And I'm just gonna put a clip. Where I stopped my stitching, you will see that this end, the back end, comes beyond that. And we want that because as we stitch up, we're also going to stitch across right here and we wanna make sure we catch this, okay? So that's gonna give it a little extra something. And then I'm also gonna add rivets, which will help as well. So if you're using something other than ultra leather, go ahead and put some double-sided tape right here to help hold it. I've decided I'm gonna take a little bit of Gorilla Glue. Now, if ultra leather or Gorilla Glue doesn't work on ultra leather, nothing will, right? So I'm just gonna put a little bit right on the edge right here and go ahead and clip this and see if it works. So this is an experiment, y'all. <laughs> we'll see. And this Gorilla Glue has a brush, which is great. So I'm just going to brush it right here on the edge. I'm not gonna put a lot, I'm just gonna put a little bit. And then I'm just going to hold that there a second and see if this works. Do the same thing over here. Let's put a couple of clips here. And I'm also going to try to use the super glue on the getting these to stay on the bag. Super glue is working okay, not great, but it's okay. So I'm gonna start by just stitching across here and then I'm gonna come down and then I'm gonna go back just because I wanna go ahead and get this down since this isn't sticking real well. So I'm gonna start right in the same hole that I ended in. I'm not gonna back stitch. I'm gonna go straight across. I'm going to turn and come on down. Pull this thread through now. And I'm going to go ahead and stitch the other side down. Ah, that 
whole side just came off. Okay, so super glue is not the answer. Golly. Well, I guess the good thing about this is y'all see that I have struggles sometimes too. That is how it goes. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna stitch across first. At least it's on now. Okay, so I'm just gonna pull this through, tie it off, and I'll stitch the other side, and then I think we are good on this side. <laughs> the front of the bag is done. It's actually really pretty. I really like this pocket. It's good for a cell phone. And I ended up putting two rivets here just for a little added strength. So we're going to set this aside. And we're going to get our other front panel piece and your two zipper facings. Now I drew a box where my zippers go. Now this is in the, on your pattern piece. So you can go ahead and take your pattern piece, lay it over top and mark exactly where your zippers are gonna go. You wanna take your zipper facing and you want to put it right side to right side, centered over that zipper box. And then I'm just going to use pins and just hold this on with pins. So now I have these on and I'm going to flip it over so I can see my lines and I'm going to stitch all the way around the box on the line, on each line. Okay, so now we can go ahead and take our pins out and we're gonna cut these just like we would cut a regular zipper opening for a zipper pocket. However you typically do that, you can either use a um, 
a knife to go down and do it or scissors, whatever is easiest. Just make sure when you cut, you're not cutting all the way to the end because you want to cut your little triangles in the corners. We're going to go ahead and put our zipper facings through. To the back five. And if you're using a cotton canvas like I am, you can go ahead and press this, which is what I'm going to do. like I need to snip a little bit closer here on this side. Sometimes just the slightest little snip can make a difference here. Now, if these aren't perfect, don't worry, they're going to be hidden. Our stripes are going to cover them. And that's the beauty about this bag, is that this really is a hidden pocket. It is so cool. Okay. So that's what it's going to look like on the front. Here's what it's going to look like on the back. I'm going to do that for the other pocket as well. I'm going to press them and then we'll move on to the next step. So now that this is pressed, I'm going to, we're going to go ahead and put our zippers in. So take your two number three zippers and put double-sided tape down the front of each side. We're gonna take the tape off and we're gonna center them in each one of these openings with a zipper pull going up to close it. So now, just going around the edge here, I'm going to stitch around an eighth of an inch to secure the zippers in. Okay, so we have the first step done. We're going to move on to the concealed pocket. Now, if you don't want your hidden pocket to be a concealed carry pocket, then just don't put the Velcro on. No big deal. If you do, then you're going to go ahead and attach your Velcro on. Now, those boxes that you do, remember the pattern pieces, go ahead and get that box on there. That way you can go ahead and know exactly where to stick your Velcro. 
So this is the loop side of the Velcro, which is the fuzzy side, the soft side. And we're going to stick this right on there and then we're going to sew around. We're going to do it on both sides because this is a right hand or a left hand entry bag. I got my Velcro on and just stitch that on, stitch each one independently, then stitch an X just to hold it on real good. Okay, so now we're gonna go back to our front, or our main panel piece here. I'm gonna shoot you out just a little bit so you can see this. You want to fold each of these in to the center, like this, so that your zipper facings are free here. So if you want to clip this so it stays out of the way, you can do that. And then you're going to take the smaller of your two concealed pocket pieces and you're going to place that face down on top of this. And what we want to do is line up and stitch, you know, we're going to stitch the zipper facing to the pocket. Now. You wanna make sure that the top of your pocket is equal and even with the top of your bag. And obviously you can't see that because this is all in the way. So I'm just gonna take a pin and I'm gonna put it right in the center and I'm gonna go right in the bag like this. So I know that right there is the top of my, sorry, that right there is the top of my bag. Okay, because that's my center mark. So now when I flip this around, I know that I have got to get the top of the bag, the, the, this piece centered on that right there. Now, I have a fold line, I can see the center, but if you are in doubt, go ahead and mark your centers so you know exactly where the center is. And you're gonna line that right up in that B. Now you're going to go ahead and either pin or clip the facing to the pocket. Now I'm going to use pins here instead of clips. Because my facing pieces are not exactly, I guess you call it straight underneath there. And I want to make sure that I'm catching it. And even if it's not even like this, I still want to make sure I'm going to sew along that facing. Okay. So I'm just going to pin that. Actually pin pin that. Real pins. Now we're going to be flipping this over. So I really should be pinning it from the other side. But let me, um, let me just kind of get this. into that zipper facing so that I can flip it over. Okay, and I'm just gonna add some pins on the side. Because you do wanna sew it from this side. Okay, I'm going to move my pins that are over here to this side. And we're going to use a half inch seam allowance and we're going to pin or pin. We're going to sew down each side. Okay. So this is what the back looks like. This is what the front looks like. And the pocket is pinned to the facing. And you can see I'm off here. That's okay. This side matches up pretty good. We're gonna use a half inch seam allowance and we're gonna sew down each side.
Okay. So you saw I had to use my little hemostat there to make sure I grab my facing. So we're going to go ahead and cut this down and then we're going to turn it around. And I'm not necessarily cutting away the seam allowance here, but I'm cutting away any extra piece of pocket that I have. Take the clips off, and then we're going to turn this around. So you see at the top, our pocket and our lining is matched up perfectly. Our, I mean our po pocket and our face fabric here. So what I'm gonna do is go to the iron. I'm gonna give this a good press and then we will move on to attaching the back part. Okay, before we put the back of the pocket on, we have to put on our other set of stripes here. So the stripe that has four rows of stitching, okay, on, on the top side here, right? We've got one side that only has three rows of stitching and we have one side that has four rows of stitching. The side that has four rows of stitching, we're gonna measure two and one quarter inches down, like we did on the other side, and we're gonna make a chalk mark. And this is where we're going to put our strap on. We're gonna fold it right there at that two and a quarter mark. Now, if you're using something other than ultra leather, of course, go ahead and put some double-sided tape or glue. So if I make this bag again, I will not be using ultra leather, I can tell you. make this part a lot easier. Okay, now, one side of this you stitched an eighth of an inch all the way down. That's the side you want on the right-hand side of this zipper and on the left-hand side of this zipper. So we want those eighth of an inch stitches to be going on the outside of the bag. We're gonna go ahead and center this over. Now, let me mark the center of my bag again. Let's forget to do that. And you're gonna place this Outside, the, the edge of this here is about four inches from the center. Now what we're going to do is stitch across the top here where our eighth of an inch stitches intersect, and then we're gonna stitch down to the end here. This side's gonna be left open that we can access our zipper. 
This is gonna accomplish two things. It's obviously going to sew down the stripe, but it's also going to catch the lining over here to hold it down so that you don't have any problems with it folding up or getting in your way as you're sticking your hand in the pocket. So make sure your zipper pull's not in the way. And give it a clip on this. Just feeling a little lumpy. Put that down. Okay, so I'm going to just pull my zipper down a little bit, keep my zipper pull out of the way. I'm going to stitch across here and then come down. Again, if you are not using ultra leather, go ahead and use some double-sided tape to hold this in place for you. I'm gonna go just the opposite here. Thread here out of the way. And I think what I'm gonna do actually is just kind of put a few little chalk marks so that I can make sure I'm lining this up correctly as I'm sewing. So that if it slips. I'll be okay. Pull this through.
All right, so let's do the other side. Make sure your handle's not twisted. So, this is the bag. I need to go ahead and put my rivets in. And isn't this cool? Look. And when it's zipped, I mean, you just can't even tell that's there. That is so awesome. This is awesome. I love this. Okay, so now we can put the back of our carpet on. So now we want to go ahead and well, I know where the center is, but I'm going to mark the center on the actual pocket piece here. We're going to line up the centers. Once again, I'm going to go ahead and use pins here. I just think that it's a little bit easier, but if you want to use clips, Go ahead, I'm gonna pin it from this side first. Let's put a couple pins in. And then I will flip it. Can seen better days. Okay. So now I'm just going to flip it. Go ahead and pull this back. And if you want to clip it, you can. And now we're going to be sewing the zipper facing along this side, and we're gonna go all the way down. And you can see my zipper facing, I did not, it was not very even when sewing that zipper facing on. Otherwise, these would be lining up perfectly. So, Be a little tight up here, but that's okay, it'll all work out. See, this side was a little bit better, this side was a lot better. So my advice to you would be when you put your zipper facings in, and this is the first time I'm making this bag, so I have to admit I am um, learning as I go here. But if I had to do it again, I would say definitely pay a little more attention when putting your zipper facings in to make sure they're lined up exactly right. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and stitch this on. So now, we have a pocket that goes all the way through, and you can see, now once we close up the bottom and the top,
going to be good. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over, because I'm so close on the, with these zipper facings, I'm going to do another row of stitching on each side just to kind of hold it securely. And then I'm going to trim off any excess of my pocket, although I probably don't really need to do that. It's not folding back. Um, and then I'm going to put... A rivet and this side's probably only going to get one rivet I think that's going to be okay I yeah I think it's gonna be okay and um, we'll come back and we'll do the next step okay the last thing we need to do with this pocket is to close the bottom and I sewed it and then I looked at the video and thought well they couldn't see a darn thing so I'm going to show you how I did this so you can't sew it this way because then you'll be top stitching on your outside fabric so you have to sew it this way but when you pull this up you see you have very little room Let me pull you up a little bit you have very little room to sew so what i did was i rolled it and what i mean by that is i opened up this pocket and i kind of laid it flat this way and I put it underneath my pressure foot and I'll just kind of run another row of stitching so you can see what I'm talking about. Put it underneath here. And then as I sewed, I just rolled the pocket. Just roll it a little more. So now here, I'm at the end, roll it towards you, pick this up. And if you roll it towards you, you'll be able to get all the way to the end here. Okay. That's a little tricky, but if you Instead of just trying to pull it up and sew, if you will use that method to kind of roll it, then I think you're going to have better results. Okay, so to install the purse feet, you're going to measure two and a half inches from the short end and one and three quarters inches from the long end. So you can either use a ruler like this or What might even be easier is to use a regular ruler. So two and a half inches you can just go ahead and mark some lines and then draw a line. And then one and three quarters inches from this end up. So one and three quarters. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing over here, measure two and a half inches in. quarters inches up okay so there's a lot of different types of purse feet I'm sure y'all know Get the screw in you've got the this kind you know what this reminds me of is remember the um I guess it was an old binder you used to put these in and fold it back to hold your papers together shows my age doesn't it All right, 
So we're going to stick these in and when I bought these, wherever I bought them from, can't even tell you, they did not come with washers. Isn't that crazy? So I just try to make my holes really small. And then I try to put some tape down on them, and that usually helps. Okay, so we should have our centers marked on our bag. We have our centers marked on our bottom panel. We're gonna go ahead and sew this on. Then we're gonna flip the seam allowance to the bottom and top stitch. Now we have that on, good and top stitched, and we're gonna move on to the next step. Okay, so the next step is going ahead and lining up these side seams. We're gonna stitch them at a half inch seam allowance down both sides, and then we'll box our corners. Okay, since I'm using a cotton canvas, I'm going to go to my iron and I'm going to press these seams open before I stitch the bottom. All right, we are close to being through with this exterior. So where your foam stops here, you have like this little notch, you want to go ahead and cut your bag right there, just to the foam. You can do that on all four corners. And then we're just going to box these corners. So we're just going to bring this up. So I'm going to sew across here, and then we'll do the other side. So that's what we have. Trim that down. And then we do the other side. One more line of stitching. We're going to trim it. Okay, now I'm going to move you up here. 
Hey. <laughs> All right, so if you were doing um, a crossbody strap, then you're gonna go ahead and have to put your strap connectors on here now. Since I'm not, I, I didn't do the crossbody strap, I'm not doing that part. Um, but it's really no different than a regular crossbody strap that you've seen in patterns before. You just go ahead and stick those on and then you'll be good to go. So, we are at the point where we can turn this bag, which is like the best part, right? So here's the front, and here's the back, and then we have our hidden pocket. I mean, this is so cool. I love this. I have to tell you that out of all of the American Stitches patterns I've made so far, this is my favorite. I really like this. From here, we're just going to set the bag aside and the front of the bag and then we're going to go ahead and get started on our lining and get our lining done okay it is lining time so the first thing we're going to do is our slip pocket our interior slip pocket so we have our piece that is 11 by 12. you're going to take the two 11 inch sides and match them up we're going to sew down these sides a half inch seam allowance and we're going to turn this around and top stitch it. Okay, now a little trick. Instead of clipping these corners right here to turn them around, the reason why I keep my woven fuse out of the corner is because if you could just fold this corner back on itself and then stick your hand in, Hold, hold this with your finger. You have, have my thumb in the corner here. And then I'm just going to pop this out. I'm gonna use my little turn, point turner to just poke that out. And look at how pretty that corner is. And that's without clipping any seams. So again, just fold, turn. And a lot of times this pops out, you really don't even need to use your, any kind of point turner. in here and get that out good. Ta-da! Look at how pretty that is. Okay, so now we're going to top stitch the top. Grab your lining piece without the zipper pocket sewn in, or not sewn in, drawn in. And we're going to center this right on top of the pattern piece. So let's find our center. And I already found the center of my lining. And I'm just going to line that up. I actually want this side to go down. We're 
We're gonna go ahead and sew down each side and then baste the bottom. And then I am going to split this in two. All right, so I'm gonna line up my centers here. So just like sewing on a normal slip pocket, we're gonna come down Go over, up, over, down, and up, and get this thing sewn on. And we have our slip pocket. So I'm gonna go ahead and put rivets here just to kind of reinforce, and then we're gonna move on to our zipper pocket. If you do not have a over zipper overlay and you're just gonna do your zipper like the pattern says, you can do it exactly the same way we did the zippers on the back of the bag when we put the zippers in for the concealed pocket. You're gonna have your facing, you're gonna sew it to the right side, sew around your box, cut it, flip it to the back. I'm going to use a zipper overlay. So I know where the center of my bag is. I've marked that. I'm going to measure an inch and a half down. I'm going to find the center of this and I'm going to stick this on the bag. I put some double sided tape on the back here. Double sided tape sticks to the back of ultra leather, just not the front. I guess y'all have figured that out though, right? So I want to measure an inch and a half down. I'm sorry, I'm going to measure an inch down. And stick this on. So I've got just one side stuck, make sure it looks good and even. I'm gonna take the other side off and just kind of, oops, sorry, just kind of let that fall and it'll fall right into place for you. So now we're gonna sew along the outside of this zipper facing. And then when we come back, we will sew our zipper pocket together so that we can put it in. There are so many ways to put zippers and linings. You're gonna find the more you do bags, the more you have your favorite method of doing it. This is my favorite method. So I sewed my overlay on and I just cut away the inside and just cut the lining far enough that you can't see it from the front. And this doesn't have to be pretty on the back. Nobody's gonna see that. Then what I do is I take my zipper and I put the wrong side of the zipper to the right side of the pocket, like this. And I sew it on. Then I flip it up and I top stitch. Okay, and this is what I end up with. So I'm gonna do the same thing for this other piece. I'm gonna put the wrong side of the zipper to the right side of the bag, or the pattern piece. I'm going to stitch it. And then I'm going to flip it up like this and I'm going to top stitch it. And then I'll put my pull on. Okay, so when you're done sewing your pocket, if you use this method, you're going to have the right side of your zipper. You're gonna see the wrong side of your pockets. And if you flip it over, you're gonna just the opposite. Because when the pocket's folded like this, here's your zipper. Of course, this is how you get into your pocket. You wanna see the right side of your pockets in there. Okay, makes sense. So now we're going to put some double-sided tape on this and we're going to put it 
in our opening. So if you watch videos like I'm sure you do, you will see this done this way. You'll see it done with a facing. You'll see where you sew the zipper to the facing, which is what she has in the pattern. And there's no right or wrong way. They all work. They all turn out great. It's just a matter of what you prefer. I find this method works best for me. It may not necessarily work best for you, and that's okay. Just do what you do what you like. Do what comes out well for you, and you'll be good to go. So we're going to go ahead and take the tape off of one side. We're going to center this in here. the other side seems to be off just a little bit right here okay so now with our pocket open we're going to sew around the inside of this zipper facing. So the zipper's sewn in. And now what we want to do is go ahead and close up the sides. Now if you use this method, you're going to have one part of your zipper pocket about an inch longer than the other part. That is not a problem. You just cut that off. And we're going to leave this zipper pocket open because we're going to turn the bag. Now, as I mentioned, as an added little bonus, I always like to put a smaller zip or slip pocket underneath my zip pocket. Did I say that right? A smaller slip pocket underneath my zip pocket. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna do this the same way I did the main pocket. And my measurements on this, in case you wanna do this, in case you wanna add it, is um, eight and three quarters by eight and then I'm going to join the two eight inch sides for the two eight inch sides together and we're going to do exactly the same way Okay, you can go ahead and line it up in the center just like you did the other one. It is roughly a half inch below the overlay here. Make sure you flip your pocket out of the way when you do this. And then go ahead and sew this on. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and put a couple of rivets here, just like I did on the other bag. Make sure you flip your pocket up before you put the rivet, rivets in here. Before we attach our bottom, we need to go ahead and do our uh, top zipper closure. So you're going to, um, I found, I decided to use this zipper here instead of the black one. And you need to go ahead and do an angle on your zipper tape. So I'm just going to separate these. I'm going to pinch this and put a little pin right here. And I'm sure you've seen 
plenty of videos where they sh people show how to do this. So make sure you do it on the same side. You're just going to pinch, bring that up so it's at a right angle. And then we're going to go ahead and stitch these down. You want to take two of your zipper facings and put them right sides together. And you're going to stitch across using a half inch seam allowance. Now let me back up and tell you that if you would like, the way she has it written in the pattern, and this, there's a lot of different ways to do zipper facings as well. You could put some double-sided tape here and fold this over. Do the same thing here and fold this over. Do the same thing on the other one. Fold them both over and then line them up on your zipper, okay? I'm going to show you this method because I, for, again, for me, it just comes out a little, it comes out better for me. It's not necessarily easier. It's not necessarily a better method. It just, um, I get a neater finish this way. So I'm going to stitch two of my facings together. I'm just going to do a little finger press here and do the same thing for the other two. Now what you want to do is take your, you want to do these opposites. So you're going to take your zipper, you're going to go about a fourth of an inch away from the seam and you're going to lay your zipper tape down. And even make this easier, we're going to put some double-sided tape on this. So I have some one-eighth of an inch double-sided tape so that it stays out of the seam allowance. And of course, you don't want to put this the whole way. You're just going to put this the, about the length of your zipper facing pieces here or your zipper plackets. So I'm just going to put this on the very edge. Now I'm going to peel off one side. You're going to put the zipper about the zipper teeth here that are, that are at this right angle. You're going to put them about a quarter of an inch away from the seam. And you're just going to line up your edges. I'm going to put half inch double sided tape on this side. And I am going to fold that one edge in. Then I'm going to peel off the other side of the backing here. And I'm just going to lay this right down on top, matching up my seams, or my edges, not my seams, but that very edge of the fabric here.
And then we're going to make sure that these two are good and even on the side. So we want to do the same thing with this piece and we want to do it opposite. So lay them down. So that you know exactly which way to do it. So you don't end up with two exactly the same. That won't work. And the nice thing about this eighth of an inch tape is that it stays out of your seam allowance. So even if you're using a domestic machine and your machine doesn't like double-sided tape, this works great. I got this on Amazon. It's not as sticky as the tape from Waywack, but it does the job. Okay, so. Put this one this way. Now I want to make sure these two pieces are even. So when I fold this back, I want to make sure I fold it back at the same spot. You can mark it with a marking pen before you even do this. That might be the easiest thing to make sure you're exactly even. We're just going to fold this one down on top of it and just lay it right on top. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and start here at the end. We're going to, um, you know, of course, back stitch, come down, back stitch, and then we will turn these around and top stitch it all. Now, before I top stitch this, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a good press. So I'm gonna do that, top stitch these, and then we will come back and attach them to the bag. Okay, here's the zipper placket all top stitched. I put my pull on, and I'm gonna to wait to put my hardware on the end. So now we're gonna attach this to the lining. So you wanna go ahead and find the center I'm going to do that on both sides. Okay. 
and I had already found the center of my lining. So I know where that is. And this is gonna be my back. So I wanna make, I want my zipper pull to go to the left. And because we have a curve here, we're gonna to have to put little snips in this before we can attach this to so make it lay flat. So you just wanna take and just do little tiny, like little one eighth of an inch snips. Little baby snips. So see, that gives it just enough pull to be able to make it lay a little flatter. So we're gonna put the wrong side of our placket to the right side of our lining, and we're going to match up our centers. And we're gonna spread these little snips and get everything lined up real good. Okay, so we're gonna base this on at a, and see how it's kind of doing that. That's okay, because we're putting a flat piece on a curved edge, so we're gonna have some of that. But when it's in the bag and it's facing up like this, it's gonna be fine. So we're gonna base this on with a, at a one eighth of an inch seam allowance, just to get it on there. Okay. So we're going to base this on. Now you can unzip this if you want. Get it out of your way. It's not really in my way, but if, if you feel like it'll lay flatter for you, feel free to unzip your zipper. I'm just going to come in here. We have that basted on. And now we're going to take our top lining piece, which I was originally calling an overlay. I'm not really sure why, but I was. And we're going to pin or clip that, matching our centers. Now, you see I did edge coat this, but y'all don't need to do that.
Okay. So this is what it's going to look like. Kind of floppy here. So we're going to start here. We're just going to go ahead and use a half inch seam allowance to get this on. Take this slow and in little increments. Okay, so I'm going to move you out a little bit so you can kind of see what's going on here. So this is going to come up like this, of course with our zipper on here. But before we stop, top stitch this down, we want to cut little V's in here because see how we've got some, some gapping there? That's normal when you sew curves like this. So you're just going to, um, let me get my snips here. You don't want to just slit, you want to cut little V's. So what I mean by that is actually cut. Little V's out like this. Now where your um, zipper placket is, obviously it's a little thicker. I think I'm gonna need a bigger pair of scissors. Just don't cut your stitching, obviously. And just kind of finagle this a little bit, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and get all my little V's cut and then we will get this thing top stitched down. Okay, so we have all our little V's cut in. And so now we're just going to push this up and we're gonna to top stitch at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. You want your seam allowance to be going up towards the top of the bag so that you catch it when you top stitch.
Okay, and that is one side done. So we're gonna do exactly the same thing for the other side of the lining. We're gonna line up our centers, we're gonna put little snips, line up our centers, get this on, get our top piece on. And then when we come back at that point, we will be putting our bottom on. And then we will be almost done. We will be in the home stretch. If you've been following along, you probably have triangles everywhere. I do, all over myself, all over the floor, but I have this completed. So this is what you should look like right now. So everything's still open. We're gonna go ahead and close up these sides. We're gonna sew the bottom on, and then we're gonna put it together. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark the center. of all four sides of my bottom here. We're gonna clip this in place and sew it on just like we did the exterior. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and sew up our side seams. Now make sure that you don't catch a pocket in that bottom seam. I mean, it's, it's just really close. I don't think you will, but it's just a little tight here. So I'm just going to fold this up now. Help me later. Okay, side seams. So the most important place to match on this is gonna be on your top lining pieces. So I'm gonna pin or clip that first. And every, look at how perfect that matches up. I mean, this is excellent. So I'm actually going to put my needle down right here where I want to make sure it matches. I'm gonna start there. I'm gonna about do five eighths of an inch and then I'm gonna back up to a half inch seam allowance and then come forward and then continue with the five eighths all the way down. Okay, all we have left to do in this lining is to box our corners. So we're gonna do that the same way we did the main fabric. We're just gonna make a small slit here so that this will turn. So we're just going to, right here where this comes down, we're just gonna slit up right there. Make a small snip, both sides. I'm gonna line up my seam with my middle mark.
So I just did not make my snips um, quite big enough. So I'm just snipping them a little bit more. Better to snip too little than too much. Okay, I'm gonna trim my seam allowances back here on my lining. Now, when we sew the bag together, we're gonna to want these seams to stay open so if you want, you can put a little bit of double-sided tape here just to kind of hold it down. And um, I'm not really worried so much about it down here. You can kind of finger press that open. But here in the corners, we really want that to stay good and flat. It's so pretty. All right, I'm gonna do a little test fit and make sure that the lining fits inside the bag okay. I don't have to um, take a little bit bigger seam allowance that everything's gonna fit good before I go any further. So I'm just gonna kind of move you out so you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just going to take the bag there you go I'm just gonna fit this in make sure everything looks okay sure that my seams all look like they're gonna match up okay Which looks like they will I'm just gonna put a clip right here just to kind of make sure we're good There's nothing worse than getting everything pinned in and fitted and then realize that you have to take your lining in a little bit or let it out or, you know, sometimes we get a little aggressive with our, at least I do, with my seam allowance or not aggressive enough. And this looks like this is gonna be perfect. Look at that, awesome fit. Okay, so I just kind of do a little test run like that. So I'm going to, Put some double-sided tape here on these seams. Just to help hold them down. Uh, let's see. Now 
Now the good thing is we're not sewing right here over this big thick area. We're gonna be sewing up here, so that's gonna make it nice. So I'm not gonna put my double-sided tape all the way to the top. I'm just gonna leave it down a little bit so that it won't get in my machine area or my needle area. And see that just holds that a lot better. You're probably wondering what this is. I did put a key fob in here. And that's just the end of my key fob sticking out. I'm gonna trim that down just a little bit. Alright, do that for the other side. So I want my zipper pocket to be in the back and I want my zipper to close to the left. So I just want to make sure when I put this in, I'm putting it in right. Now, if you did your handles the same way I did, you're gonna have your handles in there. So make sure you get those in there. Make sure they're out of the way. We're gonna put this inside. Now, when we match our seams and match our um, centers here, we definitely want to make sure that we're catching the top of this concealed pocket. So we're going to be sewing the top shut as we're sewing these two pieces together. And I'm going to move the camera so you can see this being done because um, otherwise you're probably not going to be able to see a thing. Okay, I've done two things. I have switched us over to the Texo cylinder arm machine. I think it's going to be easier to sew the top of this on this machine than it will be on the console. And I also put a full bobbin in because when we're done, we're going to flip the bag and top stitch. So that way I don't have to worry about whether or not I have a full bobbin before I do that. So hopefully this is a good angle and we're going to get stitching.
before I flip this bag, I'm just going to go ahead and trim the corners here. Now, I'm also just going to put some little clips. This is just a slight curve. You'll probably be okay if you don't do that, but I'm just going to be safe. I, I just want to put a few slits in here um, just to try to make sure that it lays nice and flat. The moment of truth. Get her turned around. All right, y'all, this bag is awesome. Oh my gosh. That birthing was very easy comparatively. I've done bags that were much harder than that. So don't be afraid of that part. And the lining. Hold on a minute here. Let me get this in here. Look at how good that lining fits. I think it's like a glove. Zip it up. Look at that. That is so cool. to do from here is I'm going to top stitch and then I'm going to close my pocket um, and y'all know how to do that you don't need to watch me do it main construction of the bag really it really wasn't that bad y'all right I hope that this tutorial really helped look at how cute that is I mean this is so awesome this turned out so well. American Stitcher's writes, I mean, she, her patterns, here, I'm gonna move you out so you can kind of see what it's like on me. She writes such well, I mean, her patterns are written so well. It, she does a very, very, very good job. But I mean, look at that. So cool. Right? Okay. So I hope this tutorial helped you with this bag. I know a lot of people have been asking for it and hopefully it helps get you through those rough spots. Um, this bag, hmm, I think this bag is going to be for sale on my website unless I decide to keep it. So <laughs> we'll see. But um, probably by this weekend I'll have it up if I decide to sell it. My website is simplyclassic.net, so please visit it. Please give me a thumbs up if you like the video. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And until next time, happy sewing.